Welcome into our Big Ten football Saturday finale on a wild day of Big Ten football. That kind of a fitting end to it. Dave Revson alongside Jerry DiNardo and Howard Griffith. We're going to start you off with Appalachian State, a school that took the longest winning streak in Division I, 14 games into the big house at Michigan, but certainly, certainly a metaphysical certitude <laughs> that it wouldn't continue at Michigan. Right, right, says Mike Hart. Fourth quarter, 31-26, and Hart going the distance here. He ran for 188 yards and three TDs, a brilliant run here to put the Wolverines on top, 32-31. They missed the two-point conversion. Now, less than a minute to go, Appalachian State from the Michigan 29. Armani Edwards, who had a great day, finds Coco Hillary. Nice grab down to the six, first and goal. Edwards threw for 227 and three TDs. And Appalachian State decides they're not going to risk it. They're going to kick the field goal. Julian Rauch comes in. And it is straight and true. And Appalachian State on top, amazingly. 34-32. Final 30 seconds, though. Still a chance for the Wolverines. Chad Henney going up top. Mario Manningham hauls it in inside the 20. Six seconds to go. And Jason Gingell has a chance to win it for the Wolverines. And it remarkably is blocked. And Appalachian State, a 1AA school that had never beaten any 1A school aside from Wake Forest, comes out into the big house and beats a team that many thought had a chance to win the national championship. 34-32 is the final. Edwards was the star. Henny had a big day for Michigan, throwing for 236 yards. Hart was great on the ground, but the Michigan defense just could not get it done against the Mountaineers. Well, we've got a great, <laughs> we got a great bunch of young players here. We just, uh, they're hard workers. They're committed to our school and our program. And, this is just a crowning achievement for him right here. Even the, it won't be any more important in those last two national championships, but it certainly ranks right in there close. And it just shows you, I think, what we've got good football in one double A football. What used to be one double A football. We're we're proud of our football team, and we beat a good Michigan football team right here on this field. That's what's so remarkable about this. I think we got too much too much leadership on this team for finger pointing. We're too, we're, we're too tight as a team to point for anybody. Point to anybody to say it's their fault. It's our fault as a team. Offense could play better, defense could play better, special teams could play better. We just simply made too many mistakes, had too many penalties, and too many missed opportunities. And so now we have to uh, fight back. And uh, uh, we've got uh, to deal with some adversity. We'll find out uh, what we're made of. Well, that is probably an understatement. Some serious adversity for the Wolverines, and the schedule doesn't get any easier for Michigan as they've got Oregon next week, then Notre Dame, then Penn State. But let's deal with the here and now, Howard. What happened? Well, these are the kind of games that absolutely hurt you because as well as App State played offensively and defensively, the bottom line is that Michigan did not take care of the small things, the fundamentals of football. So when they look back at the film, they really caused themselves to lose this game. They weren't necessarily beat by App State, but they caused themselves some big problems with the penalties and the missed assignments. Yeah, and, and another problem they had was pass protection. And, and the thing that uh, bothers me the most about this problem is this happened in the Rose Bowl a year ago. We visited with Mike DeBoer and we talked about protections and, and he said that some of it was personnel, some of it was scheme. So I was surprised to see Henny under as much pressure on obvious in obvious past situations as he was today. And obviously defensively they had a ton of issues too. They've now given up 108 points in their last three games. And just to give you a little bit of a sense, the prior 11 games, they had given up 133 points. This is one of the best defenses in America until they kind of you know, ran into the buzzsaw against Ohio State last year. Then Ohio State, USC, Appalachian State have all gone right through them. Why? Well, I think some of it has a lot to do with the scheme. They're really uh, eliminating the big, the big guys inside, especially defensively. With that spread offense, App State had some tremendous speed on the edges, and they really took advantage of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think App State was incredible the way they manipulated the secondary of Michigan, especially the first half. Michigan got a little bit better than the second half, but the first half, it was all App State. All right, so Jerry, as a coach now, I mean, Lloyd Carr with a massive task ahead of him. All these seniors came back for one more year to, to give it a run at, at winning the Big Ten, at beating Ohio State, at winning their bowl game, and having that national championship possibility hanging out there. What do you do now? How do you circle the wagons? 
Well, you've got to go into the meeting and you've got to be very specific with your team. You might even make a cut up. You might pull, pull out 20 plays out of the game today against App State and show every guy on the team why what happened happened. You can't be general. You have to be very specific. It, it, it's going to be Lloyd's job to control what the players think about this loss. He can't let anyone else control it. And he, he's got to do a great job doing it.